I'm Nathan Chan. I am the managing director of Proud Fertility, a surrogacy and egg donation agency in Canada. And today we have a, who are you? Are you a surrogate? What are you? <laughs> no, I'm the proud intended. <laughs> intended. intended parent. Okay. How about you? You're the egg donor? A proud surrogate. <laughs> cool. And I'm just a proud agency owner. So today we are actually live talking about your guys' experience of the surrogacy journey. It's going to be all about post, it's, the baby's, baby, baby's here, right? Yes. Yeah, there one? When was this baby born? June 15th. Okay. So just about two weeks ago? Yeah. How does it feel? Are you happy to be a dad? Yes, I'm, s I'm too excited. I can't sleep for more than three days. Can't, you can't even sleep for three days. Yeah. Oh my goodness, Paul, but you have a long journey ahead. Do you agree? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to ask you guys some questions and feel free to answer them. I know yeah. you guys didn't prep for this, but you know, first of all, as an intended parent yourself, yeah. um, are you gay yourself? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, when you came out as gay, what was it like? Uh, actually, it's um, I, it's all about fear because because the uh, I'm I'm not sure whether whether my families and my surroundings will accept will accept me as as a gay. Also. I'm I'm considering that or whether I could be a a parent in the future. That was your wow. It's a hard yeah. thing. So, mm -hmm. do you come from a country where um, it's just as acceptable as maybe in Canada, where LGBTQ community is very yeah. Prominent? Actually, um, actually the country where where I'm I'm living will not will, will not ac accept uh, widely accepted the, the LGBT community. So. Uh, so um, I, I faced uh, lots of pressures at that time to come out. Okay. Yeah. And how do you feel now? Oh, what a long journey! I'm so I'm so excited that I'm I I thought I made the right decision to come out, and I am now living just uh, in the sunshine every day. Okay. Well, tell the viewers, come out of the closet and. A baby is in store for you if you would like to go for your dreams, right? Yeah. Okay, so how about to the proud surrogate? Tell us a little bit about why you became a surrogate and why specifically for a gay man or a gay couple, for example. Um, would you like to help them? So I chose to become a surrogate because during the pandemic, I felt very grateful to be a mother to two beautiful baby boys. And I thought it would be a shame for a family to not be able to experience that just because of their sexual orientation. So. I chose Kevin, or chose Aki <laughs> specifically um, because he had a really great energy about him. He seemed very genuine and he seemed like he had a lot of love to give. And yeah, I just wanted to make that dream come true for him. So you made boys, and did you give him a boy? I gave him a girl. <laughs> oh, so you have a little girl. Yes, I love girl. <laughs> so cute. Okay. Um, you know, back to Kevin. <laughs> Back to you, uh, the intended parent. Um, what was your biggest fear in your entire journey? And, and tell the audience. Yeah, only the speaking. Um, I were I was fear I was fearing about the failures. Um, also, also I I knew that there there um there are probably will be fail be failed for first time probably from time to time, but, but I, but I hope for, but I still hope to be succeeding the first time. So the failure is my biggest fear. And there's a lot of different failures and we educate at Proud Fertility to yeah. surrogates and intended parents that failures come in all forms and failed transfers, miscarriages, yeah. chemical pregnancies, even a late term pregnancy loss. So it is a big fear. And, 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 and was it hard for you actually? Was that a big fear for you too? It was, it was something that I kept in had in the back of my mind was that I didn't want to obviously let my auntie down or didn't want my body to fail me in growing this future child. So okay. this story turned out to be... So what was your biggest challenge if it wasn't that then? My biggest challenge was the morning sickness. <laughs> morning sickness. Morning from... sickness and yeah, probably the insomnia in the last couple of months, but that, that's about it. <laughs> you told me that you usually eat spicy foods. I remember distinctly... Yes. When we did your intake, you love spicy food. Love did that it. happen for this journey? No, I had a lot of heartburn, and now that she is out, I can eat all the spicy food that I want and not suffer for it. Tanturi, we're coming for you. <laughs> okay, so um, what about other people around you? Did you get any negative feedback or naysayers saying anything mean to you, for example? I had 
people in my life who basically weren't educated on surrogacy or the different types of surrogacy and they asked me if it was hard to give if it would be hard to give my baby away and I went into this knowing that it is an embryo made from loving father and egg donor and so I just educated them a bit on that and did they actually ask something like that what did, yeah. you, what did they ask um well I just had people saying basically like isn't it going to be hard for you to give your baby away and I was like well no because it's not my baby it's their baby I'm just throwing the baby oh <laughs> it's all yours <laughs> They're very um, accepting afterwards, after accepting. they got educated. Did they congratulate you? I had a lot of congrats. <laughs> and then lot. you're like, thank you so much. Thanks, it's not mine. <laughs> Thanks, it's not thank mine. You. Okay, well, um, back to you, intended parent. What was your biggest unexpected surprise? Definitely, it was the news that the, the confirmed pregnancy of the surrogate. Confirmed pregnancy, okay. Yeah. What, when, when does that happen, approximately? After an embryo transfer, is it like a month or two months or? Uh, it's, ju it's just about two weeks two after weeks. the transfer. So like, how was that two week period like for both of you? I peed on a lot of sticks. <laughs> oh, you're one of those surrogates. How many pee sticks did you use? Or do? I bought the Amazon package where there was like 25, <laughs> so I probably peed on all of them. So did you send pictures of those 25 sticks to I Ryan? think I sent a stack of like eight tests together where I had the faint positive and you could see it going down like all of them. Is it pink or blue? Pink. Okay. Um, so I sent those because I didn't know if they were evap lines and after I had like a confirmed, confirmed HCG test. And did you send all 24 stick pictures to him? Probably. I think oh, I did send, I think I cool. sent him like a picture of like them all stacked together okay. where you could see the line getting gradually darker. Okay. <laughs> So you're like, I think it's happening. Okay. How about you? That 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 period of time waiting, it was scary or was it exciting or what was? Uh, yes. In, actually, at the very beginning, I was I was excited, but uh, but but also come um, but but uh, but also um, very feared about feel about and uh, because. Because only the two weeks cannot cannot be sure, and whether um, and whether the child will uh, will be born successfully or mm -hmm. miscarriage. So, mm -hmm. so I don't. But 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 in the process and the ritual. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. That's not a bad. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but but during the process and the the the, the proud surrogate and share and share the 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 the, da the daily. The, the daily life with me, so I will always keep keep informed, and my and my mood and my mood my mood become very optimistic. Okay. And the before before the weeks of the delivery, I I'm, I I became excited again. Almost uh, I I I'm always always to cut down the days of the delivery. Okay. Yeah, too excited. Cool. You know, you were just talking about how you guys you contacted him daily. Is that did he demand that from you or was he like I, I better hear from you sir yet every every day like, was that in the contract or how does that work with you guys I feel like we built our relationship uh, naturally and authentically so there would be times where we wouldn't talk for maybe a, a week or something like that if I had things coming up in my life or if he did but I always I thought of him daily so I would send him as many updates as I could without being too annoying <laughs> but no he didn't demand anything of me we just had a very genuine open uh, natural communication. Yes. Really was it just texting? Was it WhatsApp? Um, did you ever FaceTime or did WhatsApp, you try that? We did the WhatsApp. We FaceTimed once and we tried to FaceTime during the ultrasounds when the hospital permitted. Okay. Yeah, yeah it's a little bit harder, a little bit tricky. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, you made a pandemic baby. <laughs> okay, um, are you guys going to keep in touch? Because it sounds like you guys are chit chatting away. Um, do you think you'll be keeping in touch after this? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely for, for me as well. And we have been friends. And uh, and for me, and the, the surrogate is also one of my families now. Oh, <laughs> family. Yeah. We are family. And um, how about just talking about advice? You know, why don't you give your advice? If someone was watching this and he or she was an intended parent or maybe a gay man, or a gay couple, what's some advice you would give to this viewer if they, if they watch this video? I believe the, 
the first important advice is that you should be bold. Don't afraid of the don't afraid of the mistakes and the failures that probably will happen in the future. Just a try. And we were just having this conversation. Like, if you were to give your little girl um, a sibling, the next time might not be as smooth as Liz, or it could be just as easy as well too, right? So it's just so much unexpected. I, uh, I always, I always think that um, the serendipity that doesn't matter. So mm -hmm. I so. I I already adjust adjust my overall overall status to be very peaceful and will be accept, acceptable to everything happening in the in exactly. the future. Yeah. So be what was it? Be bold. Yes. Be bold, everyone. Okay, how about over you, surrogate? Tell somebody if somebody was a surrogate watching this, or if there was someone considering being a surrogate, what would be some of your advice? Um, my advice would be obviously to follow your heart and build that relationship with your IP and it's such a great gift to be able to give to somebody it's such a selfless thing to do so if you are capable and wanting to do something like that I'd say go for it. Yeah. And was this mainly just to only help someone or was there anything about it that kind of helped you or your family in this process? Um, I think for me it was a very good growing, what would you call it, what would the word be, like a growing experience for me, because obviously I put in all the work to have two babies of my own and to be able to do it for someone um, who literally... So it was a growing just physically or you mean for right. you yourself? For me, myself, like as a person, as a person for sure, but yeah, like I said, when I met... You are, I, you are I, an intended parent. Intended parent. Yeah. Like I said, it, it, the relationship felt very natural and I felt very blessed to be able to that my body was able to give him a beautiful healthy daughter and if that's something that was ever on your mind to do for somebody on your should. mind on your heart and your yeah. spirit I just felt like it was the right thing to do I felt like I was called to do it so I just followed that thank you so much for joining our um, serendipitous intended uh, uh, Facebook Live, and to, to check it out, check out uh, prepfertility.com, and thank you so much for joining. Congratulations on your little girl and your bundle of joy and great work, intended parent and surrogate. Thank you. Thank Sorry you. Now. Bye.